Hare Krishna. Thank you all so much for coming. Uh, beginning tomorrow, we'll have some drama plays. But for tonight, the class is finished. We want to make a few short announcements. Uh, one, uh, we, we have a very good relation with the local community here in Badger. And we're a little concerned. We've heard many reports of devotees you know, who have come from out of this area. They don't know the road so well. And there's, they're driving very fast. They're on the wrong side of the road. And it's very dangerous you know, for our relation and especially for... A worldwide mission, an international society with an international scope. We're not suggesting or imposing any kind of uh, structure that will be oppressive. On quite the contrary, in Gurudev's mood of love and affection, we want to facilitate the service of all the devotees, especially book distribution, preaching, temple construction, taking care of devotees' needs, the elderly, women, etc. There's so many different seva committees that are already practicing, but they need funding, they need cooperation, we need to have communication with the entire Sangha as to what's going on more and more in order to facilitate service to please Shula Gurudev. We are starting to structure the International Society with various uh, departments and positions of management to help the flow of bhakti in our sangha. So tomorrow, Thursday at 10 o'clock in the morning, anyone who is interested, who has some propensity for uh, being involved in management or who is curious, would like to come, we're going to have a meeting at the garage next to uh, our house, the main house. And from 10 to 12, we will be discussing a proposed structure and get everyone's opinions, uh, ratification, revisions. We want this to be a group effort. And we invite anyone who came to our meetings in San Francisco or new persons who have come who have not been able to attend that meeting. We especially wanted to offer an opportunity to everybody who is here to take part in this process. We had three wonderful days of meetings in San Francisco. Got a lot of work done, both on the formation of the society, our book publishing, and our overseas temple projects. So in order to finalize those meetings and really establish on a practical level our international society, we are asking participation from the devotees in creating a democratic process with senior devotees and those who are interested to help out. So I encourage anyone who's interested to please come tomorrow. Madarbha yeah. will say a few words. Thank you very much. Thank you. Just, just a couple of brief words. I couldn't really add anything into that except that uh, those of you who were not at the meetings in San Francisco, try to connect with some devotees who were because uh, many of the devotees, I believe, will tell you that it was a very positive process. What we wanted to do is give everyone the floor, give everyone a chance to have a voice, to have a participation, and to really make it... Uh, a society for yourselves in service to Srila Gurudev. Uh, management is oftentimes a bad word in uh, devotional circles. Organization is probably a better one. We need to get a little bit more organized, possibly. But it can't happen unless there's cooperation amongst all of us. And each one of you counts. So if you're interested, you don't have to be a manager. You have to have an interest in spreading this mission and in cooperating with each other to do it and serve Srila Gurudev. So please feel free, feel very welcome to come to the meeting. And again on Sunday, uh, there will be a presentation on the conclusion and the outcome of these meetings to the entire Sangha here. Thank you very much. One more announcement I was asked to make by Sri Padmanabh Maharaj is regarding initiations. And that will take place the morning after tomorrow, Friday morning.
emergency. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. कसपोर शिला टंक नखाले जय जय निशिंग
ಕೃಷ್ಣಾಯಕೃಷ್ಣಭಕ್ತಾಯಭಕ್ತಾಯಮೋನಮಂಪ್ರಭಜಂತಮನುಪೇತಮೇತಕೃತ್ಯ ದ್ವೈಪಾಯನೋರಹಕಾತರಾಜುಹಾವೇತಿ ತನ್ಮಯತರ್ವೋಭಿನೇದು ತಂ ಸರ್ವೂತಹೃದ ಮುನಿಮಾನತೋಸ್ಮಿ ತವೈವಾಸ್ಮಿ ತವೈವಾಸ್ಮಿ ನ ಜಿಮಿ ತ್ವಯಾಧೆ ತಂ ನಯಮಾಚರಣಂತಿ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಲ್ ಮೈ ಮಿಲಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಂಡೋತ್ ಪ್ರಣಾಮ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಸೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಪರ್ಮಾರಧತ ಗುರು ಪಾತ್ ಪದ್ಮ ನಿತ್ಯ ಲೀಲಾ ಪ್ರವಿಷ್ಟೋಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾತ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾನ್ ಕೇಶವ ಗೋಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ ಅನ್ ಸೇಮ್ ಮಿಲಿಯನ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಡಂಡೋತ್ ಪ್ರಣಾಮ ಇನ್ ದಿ ಲೋಟಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫೀಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈ ಶಿಕ್ಷಾ ಗುರು ನಿತ್ಯ ಲೀಲಾ ಪ್ರವಿಷ್ಟೋಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾತ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ್ yesterday we explained nemi maharaj question and one one rishi now jogindra answering in brief the first question was what first question bhagavad dharma bhagavad dharma bhagavad dharma oh what is bhagavad dharma by hearing that our endless pain of endless birth death all suffering old is coming going 
and so much suffering in this world coming will be stopped forever and we will be happy and transcendental krishna prem can be attained attained and especially he told the process of that bhakti is first to surrender himself in the lotus feet of guru diksha and learning all kinds of krishna tattva jiva tattva maya tattva everything from him serving him always tad vidhi pranipati na pariparshne na seva then upadeshanti te gyanam gyani na tattva darshina then they kindly tell all these things to you by which your bhakti will increase especially we have forgotten krishna and that is why we are coming going in this world so many sufferings coming but still we don't want to serve krishna so guru is very powerful he is representative of krishna if he will take his shelter then very soon by his services you can attend this high class of bhakti this is the purport of first and and then second question how we, what is the symptom of bhagavat bhakta how we can recognize that he is a best bhakta among all bhaktas and then second kabi hobby then hobby began to answer that there are three kinds of vaishnav uttam madhyam and kanishta and he told uttam bhagavat like prahlad maharaj he see he will see his worshipful deity and his mood in his worshipable uh, in the heart of all and in krishna he will see all living in deity whole world and giving respect to all then he is uttam bhagavat and then प्रेम मैत्री कृपा उपेक्षा जह करो सध्यम नॉट अपेक्षा उपेक्षा उपेक्षा टू कृष्ण प्रेम एंड मैत्री विथ वैष्णव थ्री काइंड दो आर उत्तम सुपीरियर दैन मी दैन अस दैन सेवा युक्त सेवाजुक्त मैत्री ऑनर एम हिंग दो आर इक्वल ओ मैत्री लाइक फ्रेंड एंड दो आर सम जूनियर बट नियर दे शुड बी कृपाजुक्त मैत्री लाइक शिक्षा डिसाइड हो एंड देन हु आर इग्नोरेंट बट नॉट मायावादी एस्पेशली नॉट मायावादी निर्विशेषवादी टू होम कृपा kindness he gives them his association tell hari katha tells and thus he makes them madhyam and um, madhyam to uttam bhagavat and those who worship deities and they honor only their gurudev but not giving honor to other vaishnavas and also to others they don't respect them then he is kanishta so we should know all these things and properly we should behave vaishnav kanishta madhyam and 
and a special kind of uttam bhakta, Vaishnava Chudamani among them. You should know that even whole world, whole world's appellants are wealth coming, are going. They don't be worry, are so happy. Always no worldly desire, detached from the world. Samadarshi, equal to all, but a special honor to Vaishnava. Oh, he is Uttam Bhagavat, among them. And those, for a moment, he is not disremembering. Forgetting. Forgetting Krishna for a moment. <coughs> like a madhu, like unbroken steam of honey, always remembering Krishna. And he has binded Krishna in his heart with the rope of love and affection. Pranay Rasna. Oh. This is most supreme high class of Vaishnava. By these symptoms, really you can know and give them honor proper. If you are neglecting Uttam Vaishnava or Madhyam Vaishnava and giving respect to those who are foolish, having no qualities, and telling them, oh, I am first class Uttam Mahabhagavad, then you are cheated. So you must know all these things and give proper respect to Vaishnava and proper upeksha to others. This is second. Now, king became very happy and uh, told, Oh Prabhu, I want to know what is Maya by which whole world are covered. And they were taking birth after birth, hmm? and it, so many species of life. Hmm? I know, want to know. Nemi Maharaj. Nemi Maharaj is asking, and Nemi Maharaj is answering. Oh, one thing I forget to tell for a moment uh, that if anyone will follow this Bhagavad Dharma, Sharanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Esmaranam, all these things, then if he will run very fast. Closing eyes. Even. Closing eyes. Even he will not fall down or derailed. What is the meaning? I told in the morning that Vaidhi Bhakti is very slowly going in Bhakti Bhadi. Very carefully looking, but even there is chance to be derailed. 
not safe. And Raganuga Bhakti, rapid running in force, closing their eyes. What means? If in Raganuga Bhakti, fast running, if he neglects some limbs of bhakti, limbs of bhakti even no heart. Like the example has been given. <coughs> Take that. Evang Prataswa Nama Pritana. Jata Nurago Dutta Chutta Uchai Hasatta Toro Dutti Roti Gaya to Unmadda to Loka Bajya. What he is doing? Oh, he becomes mad. Chanting the name of Krishna and singing the sweet pastimes of Krishna and became totally mad, becomes totally mad. Subhadrani Rathanga Pani Janmani Kanmaricha Jani Loke He becomes same days in the street heaven. Oh Krishna, where you are, laughing sometimes, sometimes weeping, sometimes, oh, become so silent. If he sees Krishna here, embracing him, oh. So, if anyone is going on the Raganuga path, running fast, closing eyes, that is neglecting, some limbs of Vaithi Bhakti, no heart, because he is totally mad. <laughs> when he will, eh? when he will remember all these things, Vaithi Bhakti, like Haridas Thakur, one Krishna name, always, and he neglected others, but he used to hear from Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sometimes. So in this way, one is Vaidhi Bhakti, slowly going, closing eyes, bear carefully, and you, you know, Khurasya Dhara Nishita Duratya. World is like very sharp sword. When what calamity, danger, or suffering will come, anyone does not know. Anytime your death may come. So, at once go to Gurudev, surrender and serve him and oh, learn all these bhakti. So this is the meaning now. now. I offer also offer my obeisances to, to Dandigang, my senior god brothers and sisters, and all Vaishnavas, Vaishnavas, and Krishna. So, <coughs> Srila Gurudev has explained that Nimi, not Nimi, Nimi Maharaj, he's asking the Navi Gindras. So Habi Kavi, they've explained that Srila Gurudev has just now summarized. Now, uh, Nimi Maharaj is asking about material energy and Shri Antariksha Rishi. He's giving explanation. So in his explanation, there are two aspects. One is he's describing how the living entities, conditioned living entities, become bewildered by the material energy. And they engage in material activities due to false identification. The suffering, uh, thinking that I'm this body, suffering uh, birth and death repeatedly, and thinking that they're happy, and uh, repeatedly going through actual uh, distress, so-called happiness and distress, but actually all distress. This is first aspect. Uh, so, it's explaining that the living entity identifies himself with the body, just like when Shirabhyasade, he saw in trance, uh, Atmanam, the living entity is conscious, spirit soul, but somehow or other, by the influence of the material body, is thinking that I, whom seeing matter, I'm actually matter. It's completely irrational. This is the influence of the uh, material, material energy. So this is false ego. Sometimes we think that false ego means he's very puffed up. This is just one aspect of false ego. False ego means 
Ego identification, false identification. So what is this false identification? Krishna himself has explained in Srimad Bhagavatam when all the sages appeared at Kurukshetra. Yasyatma Buddhi Kanapajita Vyatake, Sadi Kalitradishu, Bau Majidi, Yasyat Yatita Buddhi Salilena Kahiji, Janesha Vigeshu, Sahib Gokara. If I think that I'm I am actually this body, which is actually composed, as Gurudev has explained, stool, urine, latrine, and all nasty things, then this is a mistake, big mistake. Or if I think that actually I'm a member of my family, I belong to innumerable families, human families, dog families, cat families, whale families, jellyfish families, all sorts, all sorts of families. So this present family is not my family, but I'm thinking I'm a part, I have to do what my children say, what my mother says, what my father says, what my husband, what my wife says, and I don't have time to serve Krishna. This is also false identity. Then I'm Russian, I'm English, I'm, we identify with our country, our community, American, French, whatever. So we have our own particular ways of doing things. I've got my duties to my country. This is also false identification. And then falsely identi identifying with our religious beliefs. Going, for example, to place a pilgrimage and simply performing rituals, ritual bath, instead of hearing from the pure devotee who's sitting uh, and ready to give harikata. Just like when we go to um, Nidraghat. Previously with Srila Gurudev. So, on the bank of Ganga, thousands of the pilgrims, they all jump into Ganga for bath. And Srila Gurudev is sitting with the deities. He's saying, now we shall see who wants to take bath in the nectar of Ganga and who wants to take bath in the nectar of Harikatha. So, this is also false identification. Then how we can become free. So, Srila Bhaktanath Thakur, he's explained in Jaiva Dharma, that the way to become free from this is only by association identifying with pure devotee. Just like Srila Gurudev said, what is your identity? Actually, we don't know. We can say spirit soul. But what is spirit soul? We don't know. At least I don't know. Uh, but what do we know? What are we acting as? Acting as servant, disciple of Guru. This is our identity. So, Thakur Bhakti, you know, he explains his four moods in relation to the pure devotee. Atma Buddhi. Jata buddhi, uh, Ichu buddhi, and Tirta buddhi. That if we think Atma buddhi, the pure devotee, is dearer than my life. Atma, actually, Guru Devata Atma, he's my life and soul, actually. Jata buddhi, that my family is Guru Dev and his family of devotees. Ichu buddhi, that my life energy belongs to Guru Dev, not to my country. I want to die for Guru Dev, not to die for. Uh, Yes, George Bush in his, in his righteous struggle for the oil fields. <laughs> and Tirta Buddhi, that we, that Gurudev is a place of pilgrimage. So if we adopt this relationship, we develop practice and develop this relationship to pure devotee, then we can become free from these four modes of false identification, otherwise not. Then second aspect of Sri Antariksha's uh, instruction, it's how the... Mm. Material energy becomes unmanifest. So, Shri Kapiladev. Shri Kapiladev has explained how the material energy appears. At first sight, it seems like a kind of mythological gobbledygook from the Western point of view. But actually, this Sankhya philosophy is the most consistent and self-consistent uh, explanation of our situation in the material world anywhere. The material scientists are hopelessly confused. They neglect consciousness, and then they are like ritualizing our identity with the material nature. They're telling us we're just brain waves, basically. Just waves in the brain. So, Kapila Dave explains that, uh, first of all is Pradhan, and then by influence of time comes Mahatattva, and then false ego in three modes, ignorance, passion, and goodness. So out of the mode of, pa uh, out of, the mode of ignorance, first comes sound. So at least the scientists got that right, Big Bang Theory. So first there's sound, and then sound, sound is a subtle form of space. So the Vedic explanation is very simple. They're looking what are the essential elements of experience. Material scientists are supposed to be doing that, but they don't do it. So in the essential, uh, essential aspects of experience, solid, liquid, energy, movement, and accommodation, space. If you look around, that's all you can see. 
Everything else is details of these five. These are the elements of what we experience. But then we have to think, but actually we, what we see, we see form, touch, taste, smell, these are also elements. But then we need the, sense, uh, uh, sense, uh, the senses to perceive these things. So these are five more ele elements. And then the active senses. And then there's the subtle elements, uh, mind, intelligence, false ego, chitta, like this. Very, very, completely, perfectly self-consistent. So, the uh, Kapila Dev describes the gradual appearance, first of all sound, then space. Then space transforms through the influence of time into motion, which is wind, uh, air. And then that transforms into fire, which is energy. Then that transforms into water with the subtle element of taste. And then that transforms into earth with the subtle element of smell. So now, and then uh, the senses of, of the living entities are activated, and then we identify with the senses of objects, and off we go for another creation until we meet with the pure devotee. So now Antariksha, Antariksha Rishi, he's explaining the winding down. So he says that earth, first of all, there's a great fire comes. No, first of all, there's rain. There's raindrops. I don't know if they're as wide as elephants' trunks or if they're as long as elephants' trunks. But anyway, the big raindrops. And that goes for a hundred years. <clears throat> and there's a fire. Huh? Drought. Drought. Then a hundred years, then rain. Okay. Drought for a hundred years, then rain. A fire comes from the mouth of? Sankarshan. Sankarshan. And then a great wind. This is not ordinary wind. This wind is robbing the elements, <clears throat> robbing the gross elements of their subtle elements. So it takes the smell out of earth, and the earth collapses back into water. It takes the taste out of water, water collapses back into fire. It takes the form and light out of fire, and fire collapses back into air. And then it takes the motion out of air, air collapses back into space, and then space collapses also. And then the Mahatattva also collapses, all unmanifest. So this is our timetable. Unless we actually follow the instructions of the pure devotee, we not only birth after birth after birth, but creation after creation after creation, bhutva bhutva praliyate, repeatedly taking birth, becoming manifest, and again becoming destroyed. So this is the uh, explanation of uh, Shri Antariksha's explanation about material energy. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. The purport of his explanation is that what is Maya? By words we cannot explain, but by the activities of Maya, we can know something. This Maya, what? A power of Krishna, by which we have forgotten us. And thinking that this body is me and related to this body is mine by which power of Krishna we think like so, it is Maya. Also, though who, who is here in the form of Antarjami Purush, Paramatma, and he knows everything, and he himself watching only, looking, and jivas are hard doing. They are Dehatma Buddhi, they enjoy the fruits of their karmas. This is Maya. By which we are always in jerk in our stole. Gross and subtle body. This is Maya. By which power we are controlled and do subh and asubh karma, auspicious and inauspicious karma. And we take birth and death and for whole life, our whole time creation, we are going and coming and thus suffering. Oh, that is Maya. And by which Mahapralat that he explained is done, oh, see, Maya, very duraktaya, 
difficult to know. Only those who are mam maya durataya mam eva je prapadyante mayam eta. Only those who will take shelter of Guru Vaishnav and serve Krishna and full surrender to Krishna. Only they can oh, cross, over. Uh, cross that endless maya. Hmm. And then he is asking, Nemi Maharaj, Oh, very satisfied. I am very satisfied by your answer. Now I want to know, this maya is diff very difficult to cross. Very difficult. But how we can very easily overcome, overcome by this maya? You 